to uh, to round out uh, today's show, uh, I'd like to do a, a brief reading series that comes courtesy of Brother Rod, Brother Rod Dreher, uh, Dispatch from the Benedict Compound. Uh, these are just um, two posts that Rod had on his uh, blog at the American Conservatives. Uh, letting his readers sound off. And this is a big like mailbag thread about pornography and the horrible toll that it's taken on their lives. And I just want to read a couple here because I found it to be such an interesting like window into the world of the, the Rod Dreher Benedict Option fan and uh, what's going on in their lives. Well, the, the, Rod, I, the Rod reader, Mal, is the best shit you've ever read <laughs> because – I think half of them are just made up, like Rod is writing them. But Almost the, certainly. The other half, it's like it's just as bad because imagine who's reading Rod Dreher and is like, "Yeah, Rod, I want Rod's take on this." <laughs> <laughs> and he's terrified of everything. And I just want to say uh, that the, the the post is kicked off. The, the the image that's illustrating the post is just a big sign that says "porn," but shattered <laughs> by a hammer. Look look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at it now. Yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, he goes, some amazing responses to my terrible cost of porn posts from this morning. These came in the mail and I post them with permission. So I'm just going to read uh, just like a few selections from uh, these, these reader, reader mail here. Uh, this guy says, first off, uh, I want to offer you a profound and heartfelt thank you. Uh, and then he goes, I'm a man in my early 20s who was raised in a fairly devout Protestant home, attending church every Sunday and Wednesday nights until I was around the age of 15. And then he goes, uh, and let me say that I learned just about every amoral behavior I could from people I met at church. I had my first encounter with marijuana in a church parking lot. My friends and youth group turned me on to pornography at the age of 11. Perhaps one of the, <laughs> perhaps one of the worst decisions I ever made, but more on that later. These same friends taught me how to swear, catcalled the girls in our youth group, and gave me a pretty good compilation of dirty jokes. I confess, I still enjoy the jokes. You must confess! Sinner! Sinner! <laughs> Outlander. Yeah, I have to say that, that, Catholic, right? that could, the, the horniest kid I knew in elementary school was like a preacher's child. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, he literally Catholic, just right? wanted to talk about tits all the time. And I didn't even know what they were, but he was very insistent on it. <laughs> yeah. Sl slight, uh, slight correction. Uh, Roger left the Catholic Church over the uh, the the pedophilia the church boston oh, church oh, oh, outside the scandal oh, oh does it does, doesn't matter he's now become orthodox oh so. no no yeah. once you're catholic you're always catholic <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. And, no i mean i mean the brain break because i grew up catholic the brain breaking guilt you could be whatever you want after <laughs> you could, whether you're an atheist after you just become a weird shame-filled atheist <laughs> so the, uh the guy I'm who so says glad i'm jewish and have none of that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you have no guilt or shame issues at all. <laughs> so uh this guy basically he, he talks about how uh he had friends that were cool when he was 11, but then like uh, his life changed and he sucks now. And he, he doesn't do anything that's cool anymore. I wonder what the dirty jokes were like. <laughs> so uh, oh, these letters are l so long too. Like Felix, look at look at this. That's this is like four thousand yeah. words. And, this, and he shit. goes at the end. Dear Rod Dreher, I never thought this would happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And at the end, he goes, I apologize for the length and rambling nature of this email, but I guess they, they have a lot of thoughts about this. Let me find out. I mean, Rod Dreher's, these are like letters to Ben on his forum, but instead of Dear Rod, I never thought this would happen to me, it's Dear Rod, I was always afraid this would happen to me. <laughs> uh, this is another good one. Uh, this is another reader. Uh, it says, What I wanted to write to you is about porn. I had an addiction and I beat it, but it wasn't easy. Oh, he beat it all right. <laughs> <laughs> Por porn nearly ate up my life. I am also a successful person. Graduate degree. Great job for good pay. Lots of responsibility and trust. A good marriage. Is this Trump? <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I get a paycheck every week and I swear it's getting bigger. <laughs> From the outside, I was a complete success, but it was a sham. I was trapped in a massive online porn addiction that was so bad. <laughs> I was downloading the stuff at work because they had higher speed access to what I had at home. Well, how do you stop being this cool? <laughs> I just like to say, dude, like, just stream it. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah what the fuck, man? <laughs> Incognito <laughs> window, stream. What the fuck's your problem? I would like to say, I don't want to make light of this. If you are actually downloading pornography at work, I think you do have a problem. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Ah, it's, it's 2017. Relax. <laughs> so again, uh, this one goes on and on and on. But he says, uh, 
uh, uh, by the time I returned to my Catholic faith, I confessed my addiction <laughs> my, and got over it in the confessional, but still got no relief. Then God entered the picture again in the form of a book, Be a Man by Father Larry Richards. A sermon from Father Larry is like a punch in the mouth. He gives it to you straight with no coddling or excuses. He was exactly what I needed. My problem all along was believing I was strong enough to beat my addiction on my own. And then he goes at the end, do I still get tempted? Of course I do. But I can walk away from it now, pray a few Our Fathers and Hail Marys, and the temptation passes. So, you know, listeners, keep that in mind. If you're tempted to do something, like, you know, do 10 push-ups. Th- this stuff is so triggering to me because like, as a lapsed Catholic, <laughs> a lot of this is a lot of there before the grace of God go on, go <laughs> stuff. Like, one wrong turn I could have been. Because everything in Catholic school tries to turn you into this person. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. It's, All right. It's, it's this one's kind of long, but this one is fairly harrowing. Again, it starts out, I come from a mostly good middle to upper middle class family, past practicing Catholics, stable marriage. This is like the Dear Prudy thing where they set up how normal they yeah, are. Yeah, before. yeah. Like, yeah. And he goes, or the Trump thing, really. I stumbled upon porn about at about 15. <laughs> I love it. It's all this passive thing. I stumbled this upon it. This is like it. Adam yeah. Johnson's thing about how all newspapers write about America going to war as if we're accidentally doing it. <laughs> yeah. the, only, the only people who ever stumbled upon porn are, and this is now a thing that is uh, never going to happen again, but of a generation, we might be the last of it, who literally like were walking through the woods and found a porn. Yeah, Matt, porn Matt, yeah. Matt yes. you, you bring that up. One of his readers mentions that. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to exactly that story. <laughs> Perfect. I, I, I love the idea of that happening with porn, but also everything you can only find on the internet. Like you're just trudging through the forest and you have to do a stone puzzle like in an RPG and it re- <laughs> reveals Tub Girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish this up. He, he, did, he did a follow-up post because there was still too many letters coming in about porn. And like, believe me, the first post... Look at how long these letters are. I can't possibly read everything I highlighted because, like, it's just too much. But these are the people who are commenting on Pornhub, and they just brought their same <laughs> commenter energy to Rod Breyer's blog. So uh, he did a follow-up post, and I, uh, okay, reader PJ writes, and he goes, "Our daughter was asked by a boy to provide oral sex for him at recess in first grade." I'm going to go out and I said I don't think this would probably happen. Well, kids yeah, do, kids, do it's, like do shit like that to each other, but it's almost like I mean it sounds weird to say, but it's like pretty non-sexual because they don't right. even like know they can get off basically. Yeah, they don't yeah, get uh, Yeah. And uh so they just think it's silly. And then he goes, uh parents were nice their parents were nice people but clueless about what their kid could access via the phone and teachers are too busy with academics to be paying attention. And then he goes, literally the third, the third fourth and fifth grade students at the local elementary school were using their school district confirmed Google accounts for Google Drive to send homework back and forth to sign up for YouTube and some of them were posting videos of them dancing naked for all the world to see with their Google district email display. Most of the parents and school employees were totally unaware this is going on. The overwhelming majority of parents are clueless what their little darlings are doing. This isn't high school or middle, for, middle school. This is elementary schools now. Now. Is yeah, now. Yeah. Now. And uh, I just want to say, uh, I don't think you're allowed to uh, upload naked videos of children dancing to YouTube. Yeah. I, I don't think you're allowed to do that. Yeah, yeah. Call me crazy. I'm, yeah. I'm going to tell you why I think the exact... From from experience with these type of religious people, like, okay, like, addiction is like, you have your neurotic, self-destructive compulsion to do something. Like, you'll do it even, you have to do it at work, at the worst place possible. Then you get a tolerance to it. Like, you need more and more of it. And then the, the final step is you start getting withdrawal. Like, if you don't get this stuff, you just start going crazy and acting out. And these people have these type of addictions and three factors with all types of stuff, whether it's sex, pornography, whatever. But instead of going to religion to learn to undo that, they just take all that same stuff and just treat religion that way. So not ever neurotic right, right. compulsion to just always be religious. <laughs> they need... <laughs> More religion to get the same effect. Yeah, you know, Rod the, is religious interests are getting more and more hardcore. It's like you know yeah. you're going down that you know rabbit hole and to just like the more and more fetishized. Yes. So these guys, that porn thing that they have, and that same fucked up dynamic, they never got rid of it. They just applied it to religion because they never stopped having the brain structured that way. It's yeah. easy for them yeah. to, to lapse and go back to that when somebody dies. When they get and this guy Dreyer is not he's feeding their addiction. He's keeping yep. them. Yeah. yeah. No. All right. This is the last one. 
I just like that. I want to highlight this. This is uh, from reader Seven Sleepers. <laughs> right, oh, <so> what? <laughs> seven Sleepers is what this guy goes by. Uh, I made enough Lolita expression. <laughs> okay. Podcast. All right. So he says, uh, Matt, this one's for you. He goes, when I grew up near the city, if a J.C. Penny advert came blowing down the street with the bra section, we little boys would tear out the page, carefully fold it, and put it in a safe space for communal gawking at a later date. This Hot what- damn! You mean a girl, a girl in a above the knee, sh- an above the knee skirt? What a scoop! Hot crackers, boys. I love. Oh, dude, when I when I see a woman, I see like a hint of her bra. Me and my friends are jacking off to it together. You know, guy stuff, guy stuff for dudes. If we see the J.C. Penny catalog and they are, we got some hot ladies uh, testing out the new igloo cooler, and they're wearing some short sleeve shirts. Oh uh, yeah, we're all we're just gonna be fucking. That is gonna look like you left a box of glazed donuts in a hot car. <laughs> <laughs> Guy stuff for men, men stuff for guys. Jacking <laughs> off to the J.C. Penny catalog. And like you said, with a J.C. Penny advert came blowing down the street. I'm imagining it's a windy day. And the J.C. Penny catalog is just being blown along, and then the little rascals are all yeah, chasing yeah. after yeah, it. All yeah, the yeah, dogs yeah, yeah. bringing oh, up the oh, rear. Oh, 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 no, like one of those old movies, the advert hits the guy in the face. <laughs> he needs to take it off his face and look at it. Like, oh, ankle. Like, you know? And he goes, uh, uh, I love it. It's, I also love this. And put it in a safe space for communal gawking at a later date. That's wonderful. They just that's so nostalgic. Did... Uh, just yeah. jerking off with your Wait friends. Wait a minute. Communal bawk? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's just circle jerk. So he says, well, me, me and my old boys used to go down to the soda shop for a phosphate and then beat off behind the shed. <laughs> yeah, that's, what, that's what fucking uh, West Side Story was originally. That's like, you know, the entire rockabilly era, like back when the gangs were just like white people who sang songs and beat the shit out of minorities. Like the real gang activity they did besides terrorizing every black person they saw and singing. And, and dying s- in car crashes. And dying in car crashes <laughs> was jacking off. And all those songs... The songs from the fifties we love, like you know, Gary Tasteman, "Oh Sweetie Baby," "Baby I'll Never Die," yeah. ba- "Baby I'll Never Get in That Blimp." Uh, <laughs> they're like the subtext. Of, the subtext of him is that he's telling his sweetie baby that he's like gonna stop jacking off with his friends. Actually, but yeah, he, he. But that's how he dies. He was in a blimp gawk fest with his friends <laughs> because there was a new advertisement for poodle skirts, and they were like. Ah, we got to get away from our girls, see? And they all got into a blimp, and the pilot was jacking off. And that's when <laughs> Gary Tasteman's blimp ran into the Holland Tunnel, and they all died. And get it's away. rockabilly <laughs> holiday. So I, just, I need to finish Seven Sleepers' letter here. The, the, uh, he says, uh, communal go- He says, just rewatch the movie Something About Mary, which was pre-internet porn. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was yeah, no, it wasn't. He goes. He says, "You will know the scene when you get to it." So he was like, t- he's telling Rod he would like come in his friend's hair. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, what? I think that's what he, that's what he's telling oh, Rod. Dude, this is hardcore. And he goes later when we migrated to the Burbs. A full-blown Playboy was somehow acquired. God somehow. knows how. A it was it, Playboy. It was placed in the woods under a giant pile of illegally dumped concrete. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. There's one but like Jimmy Hoffa's body. <laughs> what time did this guy bore through a bunch of concrete he took a, to get to a Playboy? I borrowed my dad's jackhammer to get to the Playboy that was in part of the disused quarry. <laughs> <laughs> That's why oh Trump dropped the MOAB on Afghanistan. He's like, there has, to be, there has to be 500 Playboys underneath that. <laughs> and I can't let this go, but something about Mary is 1998. Like, what's he talking yeah, about? Yeah. yeah. And he goes, uh, <laughs> the communal playboy was in the woods under a giant pile of illegally dumped concrete. Everyone knew where it lived. By everyone, I mean every boy for a two-mile radius. <laughs> Occasionally, <laughs> someone would say, let's go to the rock. Whence we sallied forth as a group to flip a few, maybe nine to ten pa- pages total of a dirty, and I mean dirty, magazine. Then, almost in a daze, the magazine was placed back in the rock and we left. It's like this fucking Excalibur or yeah. something. This is written like Johnny Tremaine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Johnny Tremaine couldn't use his hand for another reason. <laughs> he spilled something else oh, on it. I, I, I mean, if you read the subtext, like how gross was a magazine after yeah. a while? Like- it's covered in cum. <laughs> And, but it's also like just marinating in a forest in summer. <laughs> He's just having a jizz 
barbecue pit. Me and the lads would say, let's go to The Rock and fight off the pack of stray dogs for the right to look at the Playboy. (laughs) (laughs) The sunk sunk together page Playboy. It's like a scene from The Road. (laughs) (laughs) Civilization's gone. It's a big fucking horn concrete. Uh, This this is all Rod's writers are writing to him from the future. This is in 2070 after the nuclear war. Yeah. He goes, well, 2070, he says, flash forward a few years, and a relative of mine asked me for my help, says his son is watching crazy porn and is only 10. We look at the history of his internet browsing, and let me tell you this, nothing, nothing that was in there ever appeared in Playboy magazine. No matter what we did to block it, he got around it. That kid is now a very confused young man. (laughs) It doesn't even matter where you go on the internet. Even reading a conservative article on a family-friendly site at the bottom often include pictures and clickbait that would make the JCPenney bra section look like curdled milk. The <laughs> this is so weird. Wait, you mean you mean it's hotter than the J.C. Penney <laughs> bra section? <laughs> All right, you know what? I'm a First Amendment guy, but they got to make that illegal. If it's that, should be the hottest thing you can get is the fucking J.C. I mean, Penney. Well, I mean, Colonel Mill, come on, that's pretty hot. Who hasn't beat off watching <laughs> watching a, a glass of milk spoil? Yeah, that's the thing. It's a bad metaphor for Rod Dreher's blog because it's like probably about thirty percent of his readers are like, wait, that's. That's what I jack off to. It's <laughs> milk curdling. Uh, but I do like that Seven Sleepers is acknowledging that even family-friendly conservative websites, like, say, for instance, The Daily Caller, you'll get to the bottom of the page, and then it'll just be like, 10 amazing boob tricks. Oh, they don't yeah. want you to know. Those are awesome. Yeah. Those, like the Maxim type shit where yeah, it's yeah. like, you won't believe what happened when Megan Fox's boob meets an AK-47. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the American conservative is still uh, still bra advertisement free. Thank God. An- Thank God. That's an- why ankle, I read it. Ankle free. Yeah. And I also like the, the the one last thing is, and he said that kid is now a very confused young man. He's ten. Of course he's confused. He doesn't know shit. And the fact that he's your relative is probably why yeah. he's fucking weird. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, if the single commonality in all these people is you, you might be part of the problem. Yeah, so that's, um, that's Rod's reader mailbag for the week. 